In life, so much of what we do is laid out before us. What time we start and finish work, the ways we spend our free time, the activities that our children participate in, our friends, our neighbors, our entire society builds templates and roadmaps to make sense out of the infinite options that lay before us. As we travel on our sailboat with our baby and our dog, our life is full of excitement. It's constantly teaching us and fascinating us, but none of those templates or roadmaps that have been passed down to us seem to apply to our life. The only structure in our lives is the structure that we create. So we replace daycare with ancient ruins. Instead of playing fetch in the backyard, we hike up mountains. And our only schedule is made by the wind and the sea. At times, it feels like we're completely crazy, and honestly, I think we probably are. Why are we doing this? Yeah. When it comes down to it, we have no clue what we're doing. We just know that we're reaching out towards something that we think is good and worthwhile. So we're making it up as we go, leaning into it, and one step at a time, keeping ourselves from falling. For you, you want some? for you. Good job. Yeah, he's got a lot of wind. Wow, good morning. It is very windy. <laughs> good Lord. It's been windy all morning. It was windy all night. I did not sleep very well. Kind of drives me a little bit insane. It's just so loud. The boat's constantly like healing over one way, healing over the other way. Last night, I actually had for the first time in years that thought of like, oh my gosh, we're just floating in the ocean right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just like bouncing around <laughs> at the whim of the weather. You know what's really crazy though is Isabella does not think anything of it. The boat starts healing over down below and the noises are crazy and she's just like, bah, 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 bah. In fact, she got <laughs> the best sleep out of all of us last night. Yeah, she did. Look at the paper towel behind you. Huh. <laughs> We're uh, just getting tossed around by the wind. We just had 35 knots. The anchor's holding really, really well, so I'm not worried about it at all. Are you enjoying our day in? She doesn't even know what we're talking about. <laughs> Incoming. <laughs> okay, see you in a bit. I was worried that having a baby would make cruising harder, and in a way, it is harder. But these afternoon and evening adventures that I have with Oso and Isa are quickly becoming my favorite part of sailing, which is just like something I was not expecting. It's just so fun to have the challenge of taking her with me and like still doing an epic adventure. It's like extreme babysitting. <laughs> Next morning, we were off to the nearby island of Naxos to check out the largest of the Cyclades Islands in Greece. Now, for the past couple weeks, we've been slowly making our way eastward through the Aegean on our way to Turkey, where we'll hunker down for the winter. And so far, the Cyclades Islands have been amazing with picturesque villages, dramatic coastlines, and a ton of really cool history. But the island of Naxos stands out for several reasons. Because of its size, Naxos actually has mountains and valleys, giving the island much more fresh water and arable farmland than its neighbors. For this reason, Naxos has been home to a thriving civilization for thousands of years, and today the island boasts the fact that it is basically self-sufficient, producing all the food, fresh water, and electricity that the island needs. Which is great because now I know where I'm going when the zombie apocalypse finally happens. <laughs> While 
we're on our way, we wanted to take a quick minute to thank the people who make these videos possible. So we put a ton of work into each and every one of our episodes, and we really wouldn't be able to do that without the support of our patrons. Yeah, realistically, these videos just wouldn't be able to happen if it weren't for our patrons. So we wanted to say a huge thank you to our patrons, and we wanted to welcome our newest deckhand level patrons on board. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Isabel's getting a bit tired, so it's about ready for a nap for her. But we'd also like to thank our newest bosun level patrons, Roland Trowbridge and Wes and Cheryl Verwart. Say thank you, baby. Say thank you, patrons. And to show our appreciation to our patrons, they get a bunch of stuff, but I think the biggest thing is they get access to ad-free versions of our videos. So whenever we have advertisements in our videos, patrons don't have to sit through those, they just get the good stuff. But they also get access to our patron-only Facebook group and a ton of other cool stuff. So if you would like to help support these videos, if you get a lot of value out of these, and if you wanna help us continue to make them, then consider becoming a patron by heading over to patreon.com slash Project Atticus. We did it, we can go take a nap now. Hi, good morning. We'll be at the marina here in one or two minutes. Assisting, eh? Yeah, he's the captain. Ah, nice. Thank you. This is the main town on Naxos and is called Kora, which is actually a very common name for towns in the Aegean. Historically, the term Kora was used to denote the primary settlement of a region or island, especially during the Byzantine and Venetian eras. In these times, the Kora was typically strategically built at a higher elevation for defense purposes, as it offered protection from pirate raids, which have been historically very common in the Aegean. Man, it feels good to be in a marina. It's been a while. The boat's super calm. It's not too hot, so the temperature's nice in here. It's just nice to know that we can walk to the restaurant, walk to the grocery store, walk to throw the trash out. We've been lugging that stuff all around for a while. <laughs> all right, so I'm just kind of finishing up, getting the boat put to bed, and uh, I love seeing Oso just become like king of the marina. I just love seeing him have freedom and like exploring a place like this. It's interesting because we've only been here for five minutes, yeah. and it definitely feels like a town that gets very touristy in high season and that is not in high season currently. There's tons of restaurants and most of them are almost completely empty. I love cruising the Aegean yeah. in October and November, man. This is great. Yeah, I love that feeling of feeling like we're getting away with something. The fuel guy recommended a local Greek restaurant that we try out and they specialize in souvlaki and like grilled stuff. Got lamb choppies. Ooh, that looks <laughs> really good. Greek food, man. <laughs> and it's the simple stuff that, so that they good. do so it's well. It's so good. Do you want some too? Isabella has started really liking meat yeah, a she lot. Does. Isabella, you go. Whenever I get good souvlaki like this, I eat so fast, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, this is one of those kinds of meals where it's just like, ah. The next day we wanted to check out the old market of Noxos. This labyrinth of narrow, winding walkways today feels like a really odd way to design a town. But this Dr. Seuss style of city planning is actually quite common in the Aegean. This is so cool. There's a second layer or a second level to a lot of these buildings. And because they're so close, I can actually touch the building like across. First of all, in the medieval and Ottoman periods, the Aegean islands were frequently targeted by pirates and invaders. So the confusing layout of the streets was actually intentional, designed to disorient and slow down potential invaders, making it easier for the locals to defend themselves. Man, I feel like it goes on forever. It'd be so easy to get lost back here. 
Like I have no idea where we are right now. Second, the Cyclades are known for their strong winds. And these narrow streets with densely packed buildings provide shelter from these winds, creating a more comfortable environment for residents and visitors. You better watch your height, bud. Whoa. Yeah, that is very, very short. <laughs> And finally, the Cyclades are generally a really rocky place and have limited flat land. So the compact design of the old market and its buildings allowed for the efficient use of the limited available space. Man, you can see all the cool mountains from here. Oh, and there's the, um, what's that like? Zeus's Temple of Apollo. Temple of Apollo, <laughs> you can see it over there. The Temple of Apollo on Naxos, often referred to as the Portara, meaning Great Door, is one of the most iconic landscapes of the Cyclades Islands. Construction on the temple began over 2,000 years ago and was dedicated to Apollo, the Greek god of music, harmony, and light. But for reasons that are not entirely clear, the temple was never completed, and now the only thing that remains is the colossal doorway. What do you think, bud? That's so cool. I'm just thinking how crazy it would have been like sailing by this perfect little arch back in the day, you yeah. know? And then it really like frames the town so nicely. What do you think, baby? You like it? So today we are off to hike what is the tallest mountain in the entire Cyclades island group. And it's also one of the most important locations in all of Greece in terms of Greek mythology. The tallest mountain in the Cyclades archipelago is Mount Zeus and is named after the ruler of the Greek gods, Zeus. Now, there are several versions of this story, but according to legend, Zeus's story begins with his parents, Cronus and Rhea. Cronus had overthrown his father, Uranus, and was told that one of his children would do the same to him. So to prevent this, Cronus swallowed each of his children as soon as they were born. When it was time for Zeus to be born, his mother Rhea sought a way to save him. She gave birth to Zeus in secret and hid him in a cave on Mount Zeus. In some versions of the myth, Zeus was raised by a goat, which is a bit weird. <laughs> But Zeus eventually matured and fulfilling the prophecy challenged his father Cronus. He somehow forced Cronus to regurgitate his siblings who were still alive inside of him, which is perfectly normal. This led to a great war between the Titans led by Cronus and the Olympians led by Zeus. Zeus and his siblings emerged victorious and Zeus became the ruler of the gods. And it was all thanks to Mount Zeus as well as one very nurturing goat. All right, let's get mythological, buddy. Yeah, baby, you wanna get mythological? So, we are hiking up Mount Zas, or Zas? Mount Zeus in English. Why is it called Zas then? So there's this weird thing going on in Greece where there's like an English way of saying everything. And it's just a little bit different, which is kind of odd. How did like the British come here? And they're like, what's your God's name again? And they're like, Zas. And they're like, Zeus? And they're like, no, 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 Zas. They're like, Zeus, got it. <laughs> Public route. Ladies and babies first. Yeah. Yeah, how do you like that baby carrier, bud? Oh, I love it. It's not any worse than carrying a tent or camping gear on my back. <laughs> when we first got to Greece and we were not really sure how we were gonna be cruising with a baby, we were using the stroller a lot and just putting that thing in the dinghy, setting it up, taking it around, then breaking it down, putting it back in the dinghy was such a nightmare. So this thing, so much easier. It's like the solution to sailing and cruising and adventuring with a baby. And rock hard thighs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she's just having a great time, man. She reminds me of a dog putting her head out the window of a car. <laughs> She's just like, oh, what's that? What's that? Oh, also, hey, also, we have goats. Oh, great. He's just staring down this goat. They're both just looking at each other. Oh my gosh, look, there's a whole family. What's up, goats? They are so staring each other down. Look at this dude. He's just like, go for it. Also, let's go. Good boy. Dang, bud, is this marble? 
I think it is. That's Whoa. cool. Is this all marble? Oh, cause yeah, this looks like the trail. It like weathers on the outside and then on the inside, it looks like a kitchen countertop. Should we bring some for Atticus too? Yeah. <laughs> marble is extremely common on Noxos, and there have been marble quarries here for thousands of years. And in fact, some of the most famous sculptures of ancient Greece were carved from Naxian marble. And throughout history, the island's wealth and influence in the Aegean region can be attributed to its marble exports, and marble quarries are still in operation to this very day. Oh, so. Oh, so get down. <laughs> Dude, these goats are creepy, man. So first it was the Gibraltar monkeys they thought were gonna murder Oso. Oh, oh. Hey! Now it's definitely gonna be the Naxos goats. Hey, Oso, come. Oso, come. Whoa, buddy, goats going down. That looks so cool. Well, I guess it's good to know that uh, goats are much more agile on the side of a mountain than Oso is. <laughs> they like evaded him without breaking a sweat. Oso's like, did you see that? I almost had them. <laughs> Man, all over the place, there's these giant stone walls. And you can see, I mean, these walls are super thick. It's probably two feet wide and five feet tall, something like that. And they go all over the place. Like you can see this one goes down there, over that way, over that way, over that way, over that way. And then onto that mountain over there and it splits. There's another wall up on the top of that ridge over there. And all of them are massive. Like look how many stones it would take to make just even a short section of wall. And there's miles of these. It's just crazy to me the effort that people used to have to go through for just like anything. It's like, oh, you wanna build a fence? Okay, we're gonna need 10 guys in three years, <laughs> you know? That's what you figure that says, bud. Zoss. You think? <laughs> Which way to Zoss? <laughs> yeah. It's getting steep. Yeah. My legs are a little bit like jello right now. Yeah. It's kind of getting hard to tell where the trail is. Yeah, I'd actually read that at the top. It gets a lot harder, but they've got these cairns. So you just got to follow these rock piles. All right, almost to the top. That's pretty. It's really pretty, yeah. It is getting windy, man. <laughs> yeah, and chilly. Oh, so what do you think, buddy, huh? He's like, me, I'm a goat now. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna scale down this mountain. Yeah. Oh, so don't even freaking think about it, dude. This is feeling less like a trail and more like a pile of rubble. Yeah, I can't believe this is the trail. This is getting pretty rough. <laughs> I think we're officially in the clouds, bud. Yeah, that's true. The line of the clouds is now below us. You see these birds soaring through the air? It's really pretty. Is that how you feel? Do you feel like you're soaring like an eagle? No, I feel like I'm gonna crawl to the top <laughs> and pass out. <laughs> yeah, they are starting to circle Oso. Uh, hey, Oso, how about you get back over here, buddy? Get a couple hawks interested yeah. in you. Okay, think this is it, buddy. Think we made it. So that's the top? Yep. Okay. Ugh. Oh, so get over here. It just ends right there, buddy. It is pretty cool. Yeah, we're on like top of a cliff. <laughs> you better not fall, buddy. I'm not going close, don't worry. We did it. I'm gonna touch this marble. You did it, buddy. Did it. You did it. Oh, that was fun, but the last hour, I gotta admit, it's kinda, thinking to myself, I could just sit down and let Jordan finish. <laughs> Is the baby asleep? Yeah, she's passed out. Baby, you're missing all the good stuff. Welcome to the top of Mount Zeus. Mount Zas? Mount Zas. What'd you think, baby? Did you have a fun hike? Any chance we could like zip line down? 
<laughs> I could try to carry you and Isa. Maybe I should try to hop on Oso's back and <laughs> squish him. <laughs> oh, we could have Isa ride on Oso's back. Oh, yeah. You ready, baby? I've never been in a marina where I'm so exposed to the weather. We are here at the Perivoli family farm. We are getting ready to finally cook everything that we just picked. Oh my gosh, that looks so good. Man, bub, this is a feast. I'm getting ready to get underway today and leave this beautiful harbor. This is a really nice day for sailing.